actually, um, Beck, are yes. you you ready to go? I yes. I should introduce you again for anyone that later on I'm going to cut this video down so that it's just the message. So for those who are just joining now, this is uh, Rebecca Orient. Uh, she's the director of ADRA, Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Victoria and Tasmania. And uh, she is going to share with us about what makes her tick and maybe inspire us as well. Uh, so how's that, Beck? You can introduce yourself a bit more if, if there's anything that, I, that I've missed. Right. Great. Thanks, Pastor. And happy Sabbath, Bendigo Church. <laughs> Nice to be with you today. I'm going to share about hope today. So what is hope? What is hope for me? Hope for me is waking up in the morning and knowing that Jesus is right there by my side, that I can talk to him anytime that I want and that he will be there with me through all the challenges I face every day. Hope for me is knowing that there are kind, compassionate and loving people at Bendigo Church that have been supporting Haven Home, Home Safe, um, a housing service for people in need and providing care packs um, so people can have the dignity um, if they're sleeping rough. Hope for me is uh, when you complain, you actually have a compliment. <laughs> we have a rule in our house that if we complain that we share a compliment, try it. It makes you feel really good. <laughs> Hope for me is when you have different views on different subjects, you know, what's currently going on now with vaccines and COVID and people express, expressing their different views. Hope for me is knowing that at the end of the day, um, we treat people with love and respect because we are all made in the image of God. Hope for me is focusing on others uh, and it, it helps. It helps when you focus on others because you don't focus on your own problems. <laughs> Hope for me is um, finding the joy in every little moment that comes. And funny enough, I um, someone sent me... <laughs> this joke this morning. I'd like to read it to you. I did some financial planning and it looks like I can retire at 62 and live comfort comfortably for 11 minutes. <laughs> so finding the joy in every moment. And uh, hope for me is learning to laugh at yourself. You know, the other day I only shaved one leg because I was in such a rush. So, you know, you just got to find hope in every everything that you do because the world at the moment is hopeless. Throughout the Bible, we see God's hope for us. When the Israelites were in captivity, he brought Moses. And when they disobeyed, he still provided prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, through to God giving his one and only son at the cross this is hope for the world so that we may have eternal salvation. If you have your Bibles there, let's open up to Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. See, Isaiah gave hope to the remnant in Israel that had suffered through terrible times in a spiritually downtrodden land. He reminded them and he reminds us that those who trust in the Lord can soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I love this next quote. They may not run into a church today, but they may run into you. See, during the bushfires in 2020 and the ongoing COVID lockdowns, many felt hope hopeless. Many feel hopeless now. However, I believe that God's Holy Spirit revived our Adventist churches to share his hope through service. He sent new volunteers to support the work and companions during isolation companions in the form of drivers who were allocated the same client each week to deliver food parcels, clients that are now doing Bible studies. And I believe God personally sent 
a fairy companion to me. I'm just going to grab him one sec. <laughs> Can you see him? This is Logan. He's my special little puppy. He's two years old. Uh, he's a miniature German schnauzer for those that are into breeds. Um, as you can see, his uh, eyebrows are a little bit long because he hasn't had a, uh, a trim during lockdown, but he's still very cute and very lovable. I actually wrote a little story about Logan, which I'd like to share with you now. So Logan is small, but he thinks he's bigger than what he actually is, stronger than what he is, and more intimidating to bigger dogs than what he actually is. But he makes up for this self-delusion when he's with people because he simply listens and is present. A Schnauzer trainer once said that they only bark at other breeds, and this was confirmed in a dog park when another Schnauzer walked past and Logan just wanted to sniff his rear and not bark. Therefore, this furry little creature needs to learn a little bit about justice, compassion and love. Our, our extended Adra family loves him. They love to cuddle him when waiting in line for food, walk him and talk to him. He doesn't answer back, just is present and listens. Makes me wonder about all the times I have taken youth to an outreach and many ask me, but what do I say to people in need? I respond, it's simple. Just listen, be present, maintain eye contact and pray that our Father in heaven will give you the words to say because ultimately we are his vessels for service. That was a big yawn, wasn't it? <laughs> and we have limited time to share his hope. Just like Logan, one day he won't be there when I call him. And so I cherish every day that I can be present with him and help others in the process. <laughs> in 2020, the RSPCA reported that there were an excess of 26,000 applications for puppies, which then meant that pedigrees costing around $2,000 soared to a purchase price of over $5,000. The World Health Organization reported that stress, confusion and anger are commonplace as a result of the pandemic and that COVID-19 has the potential to contribute to long-term mental illness, including anxiety, depression, PTSD and substance misuse. Lifeline reported a 10% increase of calls for help. Beyond Blue, a 27% increase in calls for help and mental health prescriptions spiked in mid-2020 with a gradual uptrend to mid-December. So what does this illustrate to me? That people are searching for love, happiness, belonging and hope in a time of despair and extreme loneliness. So who has hope? We have. We go to church every week, well, online at the moment, we sing songs, we hear messages of hope, we have friendship groups, but what are we doing with this hope? Is it just one day a week? How do we actually meet people outside of our Adventist bubbles? And how do we use the gifts that God has given us? My granddad, Pastor Bill Otto, used to say, use it or lose it. In the last 12 months, 274 ADRA volunteers across Victoria have been providing 45,000 volunteer hours to distribute over 273,000 relief packages for people in need. This is equated to an in-kind value of over a million dollars. I think through ADRA, we can start to break down this bubble, this circle of influence, to expand to communities of influence which reflect justice, compassion and love. I witness love and compassion. One sec. My screen's gone funny. Next. <laughs> One sec, sorry. See, I witness love and compassion. 
during the tragic bush bushfires of 2020. I thought I would take you now back to the bushfires and some of the stories and some of the experiences that I shared with the team there on the ground. It all started on Monday, December 30th. Uh, and I received a text message from Marilyn Beveridge. Some of you may know her. She was the manager of the time at Adra Bansdale. The text message said, Beck, we have been activated by the Red Cross and Food Bank to support people in need through an activation, through a relief centre in Bansdale. See the scorching temperatures and wild thunderstorms saw, saw the fires near um, Bruthen, Buchan and Bonang expand and move rapidly. I said to Marilyn that I'll be coming up and to um, get the troops ready because we need to support. Tuesday, the 31st of December, 2019, um, Marilyn called me and she said, uh, Beck, there's been a change of plans. <laughs> uh, Food Bank and the Red Cross have decided to activate a, another area to be a relief centre, not Adra Bansdale. And I said, okay, uh, let's just pray because I know that, you know, we have been in the community for over 15 years and we've been helping with the farmers who have been in drought. I know that if we are going to respond, that God has a plan. So Marilyn and the whole team prayed and she sent text messages to all the farmers that they had been supporting during the drought over the past two years. And at the time she thought, this text message is not going to get through to any of the people because the phone lines were down, there was no reception. She got this one text message back and it was from the fire captain of the Wawira uh, Fire Service. And he said, thank you so much, Marilyn. We are in desperate need here. Uh, we, we need support. We can't get things in. We can't get food in. Can you please help us? And this is what I arrived to on New Year's Day, January 1. <laughs> I arrived to a sea of Adraves. By mid-January, over 50 families in the following areas had been provided with supplies and 59 families had been provided with $500 ADRA cash grants. Here are some of the areas that we supported. In Orbost and Wawira, hygiene packs and food and water supplies. Clifton Creek, we supported with water, groceries, hygiene packs, cleaning materials, filtered jugs, fruit and veggies. At the Bansdale Relief Centre and Lucknow Hall, we supported with catering and food supplies. In Sarsfield, we supported with food, water and furniture to furnish emergency accommodation. We supported with feed for sheep and horses. In Club Terrace, we supported with groceries, hygiene packs. At the Orbost Emergency Centre, we provided bread, fruit, veggies and water. In Buchan, we provided hygiene packs and fodder for goats and sheep. In Lindenau, we provided hygiene packs and essential supplies. Adra was able to assist thanks to generous donations with needs beyond immediate survival. Fencing needs were essential. Emergency services were struggling with the livestock wandering freely on the roads. Fences needed more than repairing. They had been burnt down. Adra distributed fencing wire, barbed wire, star pickets, solar energizers and insulators for the electric fences purchased locally where possible. We were also able to source a number of generators and water pumps, fuel, jerry cans and P2 masks, thanks to the generous offerings provided by Burwood and Nutterwadding churches. Pastor Tony Campbell is now known as the generator man. <laughs> Here is a picture. Marilyn is on your far right um, with the volunteers from the Salvation Army. It's interesting to note that in regional areas that 
it's really not about your logo, about your brand. It's about everyone actually banding together to support. See, the next day, these two were helping out Adra Bansdale. And uh, one of the ladies there actually needed a tent from Adra Bansdale. The next photo shows our work with Red Cross. It's very interesting <laughs> to note that three days after we were deactivated, the Red Cross called and said, uh, we need support at our relief centre. Can you please help? It's really amazing how God works so that we can all work together to support people in need. This is a great picture from one of our Adventist churches in Melbourne, um, Casey Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we have so many dedicated people out there that just want to help and just want to be servants. And they came up to Bansdale Church and they cleaned the whole church because at that time the church was so busy um, supporting people in need in the community that they came up and helped to clean the whole church. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, this was probably one of the saddest things that I saw at my time in Bansdale um, during the fires. Um, these, this is a picture of one of the Adventist families that lost their home. They also lost some of their livelihood as well because um, Don was an orchardist and so he lost a lot of his um, orchards during, and it was really hard going around and seeing that, you know, all of his plants that he had planted and all the fruit and that had, had died during the fires. Um, Diana, his wife, was actually an Adra leader for many years. Uh, and the one thing that I noticed when um, they were being, they were actually reported to Channel 10, there were cameras there. And when we arrived uh, and during the filming, Diana had this, uh, you know, um, smile on her face in the sense of this is all just temporary. This is all just temporary. And she came to me and she said, Beck, you know, we know our great hope. We've lost everything here, but we know our great hope. And I thought, praise God, praise God, because people need people need this in their lives right now. Um, people need God. When things have tragedy, people just need God. Here's some more of the pictures of the fires that ravaged through uh, his property. And you can see the heat just burning the metal, um, you know, in the sheds there. And uh, he lost a lot of his um, tractors as well. Um, so it was quite devastating during that time. And I remember, I remember just smelling the air, you know, this thick, thick, you know, smoke air that was that was there. Um, so it was a very tragic time for everyone involved. One thing I would like to say is that um, the miracles that happened during this time in the sense of we needed, we were getting so much support from the Melbourne churches that um, we needed an extra warehouse and one day we were, um, I was there with Marilyn and uh, through another person, through another church member, a, a real estate agent came up and said, um, this warehouse is free. We've heard of what you've been doing in the local community. We would like to provide this to you, you know, rent free. And I just remember Marilyn saying to me, praise God, you know, he, he always has it covered. He always has some plan and he brings people um, into your life to, to bring that joy, to bring that hope. Uh, so and then, you know, from that being set up in the city centre, uh, we were able to support more people in need. And one of the stories I heard was that one of the uh, people that were affected by the fires um, came and, and chatted to one of the volunteers at that day and they were so warmed um, by having that chat to one of the volunteers that they drove over 100 kilometres the next week to come and see that same volunteer. You know, it goes to show that we, um, you know, we have so much to share and that through us, God can be, you know, God can share what he needs to share. So I thought now I would go into um, a bit of what we've been doing across Victoria. 
uh, and the amount of projects that we have to support people in need. Uh, there are about 26 projects across Victoria and about 34 locations where we provide services. A lot of these services were actually closed uh, during lockdown um, and we had to make a decision, you know, after the bushfires, COVID hit and we had to make a decision, do we actually stay open? Do we close? A lot of the things were very iffy at that time. Um, and we had to change our whole model of service because we had a lot of community meal programs that, you know, we couldn't have people in anymore. So we had to go to drive-through models, delivery models. Um, but yet again, our church was there at the forefront, you know, ringing me saying, Beck, we want to help. We want to support people in need. And then the funding came in, you know, we had, where do we actually get all the PPE that we need, the personal protection equipment, you know, the masks, the gloves, because it all came on very sudden. And so through ADRA International, we got $20,000 through the op shops, uh, Across Australia, um, we got funding to to buy masks. Uh, it was just amazing what happened during that time. I remember City of Melbourne uh, came to us and said, without ADRA, we wouldn't have been able to support the amount of people who have been living rough in the city. Um, it was the city of Maroonda that came and said, Beck, without your team on the ground supporting with deliveries to our most vulnerable who are isolated at the time, um, we wouldn't be able to, to help as much as we could, you know. And then in December 2020, um, we, I believe we were rewarded uh, we received over $230,000 in government grants. And this, this goes to show um, of how we accepted the call to help people in need during that time and that God was leading this whole thing through, through th from the beginning, which he does. And um, you can see there on the screen all of the programs and Bendigo is listed there. Thank you to Bev, uh, Laurie and the team. Thank you for uh, Pastor Daniel for supporting um, during the, the, the COVID issues right at the start. You were there. You helped with deliveries. Um, thank you for your leadership there. Uh, one of the key things that um, ADRA has been supporting with um, has been really good during and outside of lockdown, and that is support for uh, people living with disabilities. And it's been um, a godsend that we've been able to partner with organisations to help people uh, actually employ students with disabilities so that they can get um, employment through the program and they actually get a Cert two either in uh, hospitality, uh, retail, warehousing or our horticulture program through our community gardens. So that's been a real blessing and it's interesting to note that even though a lot of things have closed down through our essential food relief, we still be a we're still being able to have many of the students support and last week they were actually at one of our centres in Croydon, Croydon making a vegetable uh, bolognese or what we call is a veganese and uh, that's actually going to be distributed to people in need. So God has a way of making things work when everything is locked down. You'll also see there that we have partnerships with Women's Housing, um, NEMI National. So NEMI is actually the health preventative arm that we have. So they have their nurses come on site to, to some of our centres to provide health checks. Um, and the women's housing, actually, we've been, I'd like to thank, uh, if they're watching, uh, Wonturner Church uh, for adopting um, the, some of the houses there. They help with community gardens. They help with care packs. And um, it's been amazing to see that the work that they've been doing. Right now, I'd like to take you to uh, our international area and a few of the, well, what Adra's been doing overseas, and then a look into uh, a testimony from one of the uh, clients that we helped um, a few years ago. His name is Jonathan, and how through just a few people, Jonathan was able to connect um, with Adra then with the church, and he was baptised um, as well. So I'd like to play that for you now. 
We are ADRA, a global community of people helping people. Our work reaches women, children, and men in need, in communities big and small around the world, in challenging times and rewarding times. We serve humanity so all may live as God intended, with justice, compassion, Love. Learn more about us and get involved. Adra. About four years ago, my, my world changed dramatically for the worse. My name's Jonathan. I'm from Melbourne. We went from being normal to having nothing and being out on the streets looking for somewhere to squat and entering a world that I didn't even suspect existed. Ended up shifting around a bit, stumbled across an empty factory. It was cold and lonely in winter and hot and lonely in summer. As a, as a parent, it was rather brutal not being able to, to provide my kids with a, a proper house. We just slipped through the cracks incredibly quickly feeling that we didn't matter, nobody cared. It was really, really horrible. After about a, a year and a half of, of struggling, somebody told us to try Vive Cafe. And Vive Cafe provided uh, groceries, basic staples that we were struggling to get elsewhere. Friendship without judgment, the feeling that you're a person and, and you matter. I think that alone is worth more than, than any other thing. I first met Jonathan two years ago. He was homeless, hungry, and struggling to provide for his three kids. We were able to provide Jonathan with food, uh, clothing, warmth, and church. Even just for one night a week, it just made, made people feel human again, feel like they mattered, gave people back some dignity. And we went there thinking we we're going to be uncomfortable because it's religious and they're going to try and push the religion upon us. And it turned out to be exactly the opposite of what we thought and it was just really friendly. It's you know, restored my faith in humanity for sure. Since we've gotten back on our feet and found a house, the boys have, have thrived. My boys and I volunteer because the greatest need is for companionship and friendship. And if you know, people don't get that, they lose that touch with humanity, they, they really have nothing. If every person did just a, a tiny bit to help, we could end homelessness and poverty in Australia very quickly. It's just everybody doing a small bit. I love that video clip uh, <laughs> and just praise God that he can use us um, to support people in need. If you have your Bibles now, let's go to Romans 5, verse 3 to 5. And he says, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. His love is being poured, not sprinkled, not on and off, but overflowing love. And it is this overflowing love that produces joy. <laughs> See, some may not know, but uh, I actually contracted whooping cough uh, around when COVID hit. Uh, at the age of 43, I contracted whooping cough. And so while I was coughing my lungs out, um, I heard a knock at the door. And as I opened the door, I discovered uh, three bags and a note which actually said, with love, from your family at Adra Casey. This made me cry. When I was at my sickest and my lowest, it was God's love through my very own Adra team that shared the joy that I needed. 
During the bushfires and COVID, the world was seeing pain, despair, fear and isolation. But through God's people, I witnessed his miracles of compassion, joy, love and hope. I want to share with you now uh, a testimony that or something that happened to Liz during Liz is our manager at Monterna Church and she reflects I've had many God moments but today we had a domestic violence client come in with her six-week-old daughter and I asked her if she was using formula and she said yes do you have any I'm desperate I asked which one she used she said optimal gold well, we've never had that one in my recollection, but I said, I'll go and look, but I don't think so. Instead, I'll get wipes, nappies, lotions, etc., for you. So I went to my baby food cupboard and there at the front was a can of that exact formula. I took it to her and said, God wanted you to have this. <laughs> Praise God. What miracle. And then this from Sue Beamant, who manages our um, Adra Fantry Gully uh, program every Monday. She says, we had packed all of our food hampers for the day and had nothing left for our next lot of deliveries. Two of the volunteers who were not Adventists said, let's ask your God to bring in the four staple items that we desperately need. The next day, those four exact staple items were delivered. <laughs> It reminds me of the verse in Acts 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. He is always providing. I would like to leave with you now a little article that I wrote about hope and belonging. What does it mean to belong, to feel connected, to feel loved, to feel heard? Sorry, that's Logan. <laughs> In Adra's work, we say clients feel seen and heard. They are not treated like a number, a statistic, as we believe that everyone is made. In one sec, I'll just grab him. The dog wanted to be part of the celebration. I think. Okay. <laughs> Let me start the dog's again. part of it now. Yeah, Elk said, hey, this is my sermon too. Let hey, me I, want to be, I want to be part of this. All right, let's start again. What does it mean to belong? Do you feel belong? Do you feel like you belong? To feel connected, to feel loved, to feel heard. In Adra's work, we say clients feel seen and heard. They are not treated like a number, a statistic, as we believe that everyone is made in the image of God. Yes, even you. And how do we treat new people who come into our churches? How do we treat people who are facing hardship? How do we treat people who look or act different than us? In Luke 14, verse 14, he says, Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a banquet or church lunch, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. See, if we truly follow Jesus and his gospel message of belong, believe and become, we should be moving away from behave, believe, belong. Are we teaching behaviour modification or gospel transformation? A church that follows this model allows people to come as they are. Literally, it allows people to be honest and vulnerable. It leaves room for grace. In actuality, it's all about grace. It allows us to acknowledge that we are not perfect, but God is. We are not righteous, but God is. We don't have our act together, but God does. It is our dependence on him that others can see God through us. I am so proud to be an Adventist because we go the extra mile. We treat people like they are made in the image of God. And we have this great biblical hope to share. Let's continue to be the church when the service is over. Thank you, Bendigo Church. And thank you, Beck. And uh, let's uh, once again listen or sing along um, to the song Blessed Assurance. I'll share that now. And then after that, uh, Beck.